Hello and welcome once again to Let's Play Steamboat Chronicles. Get this ready, time boy. we're going to be operating the menu and doing the billiards and battle mode. Specifically the plate giving and bonus modes for doing all the stuff in the game. These are really the final challenges as far as battling and uh, billiards goes. We're going to do the billiards first because it's incredibly dull. Let's get it out of the way as quickly as possible. You won't be seeing an awful lot of this because it's very, very repetitive. This would also be probably impossibly hard if it wasn't for the fact that the uh, break ace trick exists. Here we are, the first tournament mode of two modes. Simple tournament, we fight five people at billiards. And we have to defeat Sylvia, the best person at billiards ever, to win a prize. This is the one that you have to get. You have to do this if you want the plate. If you randomly decided that 100% completion involves getting all the plates. Every plate. Anyway, on to round two. I'm showing this because it's Dandelion. Hello, Dandelion. We haven't actually played Dandelion before, so let's uh, just rush through this. See what it looks like when we beat him. Exciting. He was, of course, too busy being executed in the epilogue to come and play us a pool. I guess I lost. Try to sound a bit less evil there, Dandelion. Anyway, that's that mode. Let's skip to the end. It's really not terribly interesting. Hooray! Congratulations! You have uh, won. There we go, the Hustler Plate and the Championship uh, Certificate. Fantastically useless item. We'll have a look at that next time. So right now we've got the incredibly punishing Hustler King mode. We get to actually choose a character this time, so we're going to play as Bergamot, because Bergamot is amazing. Okay, now. And now we must fight every pool player, including ourself and Bergamot, who is also ourself, now. for the purposes of what's happening here. In a row. No pauses, no saves, no second tries. <laughs> Oddly, we can choose a uh, one match or three match game if we want, you know, to waste even more of our time in this pointless, pointless mode, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that about ten, about ten people in. Thankfully I did it against McD, the easiest person in the game to beat a pool, because he's the tutorial person. And, uh, here we go, just a little bit, a little bit more. He does a foul. And we got a perfect setup to do that. Just cannon the nine ball in. Hooray! Now let's never fail again. Really, the uh, most tense part of actually playing pool once you've got this trick down is uh, well, the uh, getting the break. Because if you don't get the break, you don't get to do the trick. You have to position it pretty well, and also that's how the game deals with two bergamots, it just numbers them. And although uh, Vanilla, oh yes, yeah, is a uh, savory, we didn't fight her because she was too busy being shot or something. Not terribly interesting. Or conclusion say. Naturally, Sylvia is always the last person, despite the seemingly random order. So this is a uh, Wow, only four minutes into the video, we've already finished with Paul. Isn't that lovely? That took a lot longer in real life. Now we got two spectacularly useless items for that. The Demon Q uh, doesn't have any special powers at all. It's as good as the basic Q, except it's called the Demon Q, and you can only get it from winning. Anyway, so the battle mode, I'm gonna probably say that it's a good idea to set the time limit to uh, 
unlimited for the deathmatch mode but let's uh, have a quick look at what this mode's about free battle is available from the very start and here's the proof that we fought everyone yes that uh, one down there is in fact the mecha lab of Dr. Nutmeg that counts as a Trotmobile and we'll be fighting him anyway deathmatch only unlocks once we've uh, got everything so let's uh, let's go and do this this is probably Steamboat Chronicles final challenge is the hardest thing in the game we had to fight all 32 that's right 32 Trotmobile gladiators in the game in a row without losing once and there's a little bit of a twist that makes it even harder than that anyway we've equipped our stuff we've uh, I'm going to talk over Bomber Boy Chucky because he is a joke yeah we got the throwing arm because it's incredibly useful really probably the best best attacking weapon in the game and the Gatling gun because it's got a lot of durability and it's very good we got the freewheeler wheels which I don't believe I showed off before for speed speed of maneuverability is key anyway hooray we won the first battle now we shall discover that the timer which has been completely irrelevant the entire game is suddenly the most important thing in the world as uh, we are graded on time and our health and uh, durability meters and fuel meters are refilled depending on how good we were doing we did the best in that one so we got lots back even though we didn't need it because we didn't take any damage or use much fuel it's all the risk reward thing you can take a load of damage but if you uh, beat your enemy fast then it gets refilled this gets a bit of a problem with tougher opponents which take a long time to defeat anyway Isabel another very low ranked fighter not much of a problem there's a set order rather than a random order this time unlike the pool mode first of all we're going to fight basically all the actual ranked opponents that we can fight in the uh, arena with a couple of exceptions Isabel was a uh, basically one of the first gladiators we encountered in the game she is uh, no problem I think she got a cannon arm not terribly there we go under 30 seconds only gets us a normal health bonus Get I'm on you. which is still pretty nice basically the large health bonus for 15 seconds will refuel most of your health the uh, medium one will refuel about half of that and there's uh, two more different bonuses we can get as well anyway here's one of those exceptions the farmer dude who bizarrely is ranked D even though he's not actually in any sort of trollville championship fighty thing ever he is no challenge basically 104 point whatever is the magic number we're aiming for even though it says 15 seconds the game does give us a full second leeway so as soon as it ticks over to uh, 103 seconds left that's when we've lost that yes, I'm counting on you. after that it's 90 seconds for the 30 second bonus we're basically going to be aiming for at least the 30 second bonus as much as possible Anyway, Jack was a joke again. Not much to Jack. Goes down quickly. Doesn't even get off a single attack. Hooray! That was about eight seconds, I think. Pretty good. More of them, please. Now you may have noticed that every single battle seems to have a different arena assigned to it. We'll randomly uh, be in. Uh, either the Nefroburg, New Haven or Garland Arena and the Garland Arena has uh, daytime and nighttime variants and all that jazz okay here's our first real challenge Samson, Giant Sam, you may remember Samson actually defeated me in the uh, game proper there we go, that's him defeating me there when you die you have to start from the beginning, remember that 
remember that. Yeah, basically, he has a throwing arm too, which means he can pick you up from a large radius, and that is no good. You want to keep your distance, otherwise he does this. Being thrown always does a set amount of damage. Fairly hefty amount of damage. Basically, as you, as we uh, continue to be defeated by people all the way through this, this took a long time. This was very hard. Haha, that bus did a bit of damage. And he's down, hooray! You will notice the people that I lose to are the ones that throw you a lot. He's doing a dance. Anyway, Samson's not so bad because he's only the fifth fighter. Later ones will be more punishing. So we'll have to fight our way all the way back to try again. I should also point out I'm cutting about 20 to 30 seconds of loading between each battle, which is sometimes longer than the fights take. Simon, anyway, Simon beat me once. Mainly because of poor planning, rather than any ability on Simon's part. Basically, Samson roughed me up and I didn't have enough help to uh, beat Simon up. I went in for the quick kill, for the health refuel, and it didn't happen. Also, notice how he, uh, he clipped that bar into the wall and it disappeared before he threw it. That's interesting. That happens a lot in this game. No, as we'll see later, throwing is very bad. Very bad indeed. The worst thing is that after we've been thrown, we will often have no idea where our enemy is. A lot of times I find myself trying to find him and then just blundering backwards into him. And being thrown again. Here's Rooney! We're onto the C ranks now. Isn't that exciting? Wait, Rooney's bit useless, nothing to worry about. It's a bit of a pattern with these early guys. Yeah, a bit of a pushover. Anyway, he likes to guard a lot, which is annoying because we are being graded on time. He's got a uh, water cannon, which is like a worse flamethrower. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but you don't want to get stun locked by it, I suppose. There's no real risk. And if we can defeat him before it counts down to 90, we'll get a medium health bonus. See, it says 89.2. That is just over 30 seconds. And... Give it a minute. There we go, under 30 seconds. This game is surprisingly nice. Surprisingly nice. Second leeway. Anyway, who's next? I've forgotten. Ah, oh, Jimmy. Jimmy! Jimmy! Weakling Jimmy. Jimmy is actually surprisingly tough if you uh, get in close. Do not get in close. He is a thrower. He is one of the Trotmobiles that's uh, Trotmobile gladiators that's programmed to throw you or whatever he can grab. So he's described as a weakling. He will just pick up whatever and just chuck it at you. I didn't actually die to him, at least I don't remember dying to him, and I didn't have a video of it, so I presume it never happened. He goes down quickly if you're not an idiot, though. Just keep your distance. Keep your distance. I won. Basically, the best advice against most of these uh, gladiators. Anyway, on to match number nine. Get him! Still in easy town here with uh, Pseudo! 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 My lady Pseudo can be so much fun. Anyway, what was I saying? Probably something useless and pointless. Anyway, he's easy. He doesn't have much health. He's got the agricultural body. The weakest body there is. He is basically the farmer guy, except he moves around a bit more and has a sword. He is uh, no problem. Basically, a very quick fight, and you're pretty much guaranteed the 15 second bonus, unless you're just wasting time. 
don't waste your time. Smooth sailing so far, on to match number 10 of 32. Ah, Miguel, I think. Miguel. Not Miguel, there's no wig. Should point out that the parts I'm using are basically the combination of lots of experience with this mode. This is why I ended up using Adapt, Adopt, and Improve. Anyway, Miguel's a pushover. He's got a water cannon and a spiky ball, but he is no problem, for he does not guard. I won. Guarding's a very underused skill in this game, really. I should probably guard more, I'd probably take less damage, but I can't be bothered to. On to match number 11. You gotta win it. Take some ass. We're about a third of the way here now. Ah, oh, the World Super Police has come to see us. It's Bernard! The last, uh, the last guy I actually fought in the game because I neglected to do it, do it earlier. I mean, Bernard is basically the uh, firefighter guy, but with flamethrower, he's a policeman. He's got the, uh, the police windshield, which is a lot of fun. The flamethrower is a bit more deadly than the water cannon. Not that much though. Let's jump around like an idiot and you'll be fine. Jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. Hooray! We get the 30 second normal bonus. I don't know if we've uh, actually attained it yet, but the uh, 45 second bonus is also called the normal bonus, but is half as good as the 30 second normal bonus. It is the lesser of two normal bonuses. The 60 second bonus is ridiculously tiny, and after that you just don't get a bonus at all. Now, Fighting Surgeon Genius is a bastard. He is absolutely the worst person to fight in this mode, not because he'll defeat you, but because he'll waste your time. He's got a shield and he guards a lot. Does he have a shield? I think he's got a shield. No, he doesn't have a shield. Okay, he just guards a lot. Which means you won't do much damage, and he's got the bazooka arm which uh, we last saw in action actually being used by bergamots on the airship. Very exciting. When it hits you, it blasts you backwards, makes you fly backwards, which wastes your time. Don't waste your time. Yeah. See, we're already 30 seconds in, and he's not even at half health. Now, I'm not sure if changing the options to an unlimited time system would affect this mode or not because when we actually run out of time we'll see later what happens is we lose we just lose no matter how much damage we've done we lose so if we take if a battle takes more than two minutes that is the same as losing it in this mode thankfully we uh, don't actually come close to that until the very end anyway that's genius what do you give us? I think we only got the 60 second bonus? No, we didn't get any bonus. That took more than a minute. That is no good. Oh, Guerrero! Guerrero! I lost to Guerrero once again. More due to poor planning than anything else, to be honest. Very sad. Boom. There we go. That was Guerrero. Guerrero killed us. Anyway, Guerrero's not much of a problem, but we are in the New Haven Arena, which is the most annoying arena because it's so small and it's also filled with explosive barrels. So throwing characters can and will blast your face off. Also, Guerrero does occasionally throw. Not very often, but still enough to cause problems. 
I won! It's very hard to beat quickly as well. Which means our health remains poor. Never really in that much risk of running out of uh, durability. Unless you've equipped a silly weapon, of course. A silly weapon with no durability. Like the throwing arm, which actually has unlimited durability. While still doing more damage than the normal arm. Anyway, Shibulettes. She's still using the same stuff from the uh, tutorial mode. I can't remember if she actually had an upgraded Trotmobile when we fought her in the epilogue or not, but she's not much of a problem. She just won't stay still, though, and she guards with her shield. Basically, you're not going to beat her in 15 seconds, and also lock on, Jesus. Yeah. Also, a bit of a problem with throwing in this game when you actually do it, is that when you pick up an enemy, you lose lock on. And if you lock onto them while they're still in the air, you'll lose lock on again when they hit the ground. It's very strange. See there, I lost lock on when she stood up. But it's in your best interest to wait for them to stand up before you lock on and fire with the Gatling gun. Otherwise you'll likely miss, unless they are huge, like uh, Samson, in which case you'll probably still hit them. But a lot of people aren't huge. Anyway, we're really tearing through this list, we're on to number 15 already! I'm betting on you. Number 15, also known as A Break. Because here's Come Saffron. On, Saffron May remember Saffron as Bisque from that melodramatic thing that happened. Once again, random loss. Trying to get in there and be at her quick. But what actually happened was I died. That was very sad. It happened twice. Twice that happened. Anyway, Saffron's got the whip arm, which is annoying because it can hit quite a distance, it's a very long range melee weapon that hits through items. She's got basically no health though, so she is no challenge. Pretty much guaranteed the 15 seconds in less sure. I oh, know, an idiot. Hooray. But you might say I'm an idiot for even bothering with this mode. I should mention there are three prizes. We've already earned the first one by lasting 10 rounds. I believe the second one is at 20 rounds, and the last one is at 31 rounds, 32 rounds even. Anyway, once again, I lost the boss elephant. Because I'm an idiot, trying to get in quick, trying to get the best bonus, I've already missed it, and now I'm dead. Not sure how I managed to start that fight with so little health and get after Saffron. Yeah. So I've probably mentioned that the actual winning performance was performed later on than all the losing ones. Basically a case of bashing my head against the wall, dying a lot, wasting a lot of time and then just coming back to it later and then winning first try. I've probably mentioned that my unedited footage of the winning run, just the winning run mine, not all the other runs, was over an hour long. Those loading screens really add to the time. It's especially aggravating because there's no need for it to keep switching arenas. It could just stick us in the Garland arena, just load in the next Trotmobile straight away. You don't even need to do this. This could have been nicer, could have been faster. But it's not! Oh god, Schneider. I hate Schneider. Schneider is the hardest bastard in the game. He's about as dangerous as Elder, except he throws. He throws and he gets in close, and when he gets in close he throws. He doesn't have a ranged weapon, so he'll never stay away from you, he'll always come in close. He's got a shield, which he'll use. He is a tough nut to crack, and no mistake. Is difficult with a capital D, even though he is in fact an S rank, I think. Basically, what you have to do is be incredibly lucky and hope he just keeps grabbing things. When he's picking stuff up, you can actually hit him. Otherwise, he'll just 
spin around everywhere like some sort of hyperactive monkey. And then he'll get close and he'll throw you, unless you throw him first, yes. That's what the throwing arm is for. Another finicky thing about throwing in this game is, oh god, look at my health now. Oh uh, yeah. But sometimes it's not clear whether you can pick enemies up or not, and you'll always, rather than pick up the enemy, pick up any closer item, whereas the enemy has the ability to pick you up through items. Anyway, there's Schneider dead. Hooray. I say he's dead. Defeated. No feat for him. None of the feet. Anyway, look at the tiny 60 second bonus, that's not even worth it. It's just a slap in the face. You gotta win it! Kick some ass! Okay. The next two fights are incredibly difficult because after fighting Schneider, you'll have no health. No health at all. I pointed out that every time you've you lose to Schneider, that's like half an hour of playtime down the drain. Ray Dudley is bizarrely in his uh, Dudley 1 form from way back at the 4th uh, at, at the start of the game. Yeah, annoyingly, his spiky ball will hit you a lot. It's very hard to dodge, especially in such a small arena. What you want to do is just throw him. Throw him and kill him before he kills you. Good thing it doesn't do much damage because I don't have much health. We got the 30 second bonus, and oh boy, are we going to need that. I won. We're going to need all 30 of those second bonuses. We're still in the red though. The 30 second bonus is really not very good. You gotta win Only it. worthwhile one is the 15 second bonus. It really all helps, I suppose. Anyway, here we have Nora. Never actually managed to lose the Nora, but every single fight that I managed to get to, I had very little health. And she has the Gatling gun. Which is basically when you're trying to beat somebody with the Gatling gun, you'll only ever hit them when they have the opportunity to hit you. So you'll just be trading blows. What you want to do is get in close, chuck them. Chuck them. Smash him. Didn't get the chance to punish her there. See, every time I hit her, she hits me. But let's throw her. Very good idea to pick up an explosive barrel after you throw somebody in this arena and just chuck it at them. It's basically free damage, but I don't do it much because I don't know. I don't know why I do things. Okay, 45 seconds. As you can see, it's called the normal bonus, but it does half as much as the other normal bonus. Get up! Obviously, in Japanese, there's two words for normal. Anyway, after uh, Nora, we're bizarrely onto the uh, uh, the fighting trot reveals of Mem Village of all things. So, uh, yeah. See the developers realise what an absolute slog those last few battles were, especially with Schneider, and uh, decided to throw us a bone here. Recuperate, restore ourselves. Really, the second half of the game, after after you survive Schneider and Nora, it's smooth sailing right to the end here. Not going to see many more death videos. Get up! I'm betting on you. Kick some ass! Anyway, mains is pretty much exactly the same as the last guy we fought. I.e., not much health, not very good at fighting, not very good items. So he's got the sword instead of the boomerang, and he'll throw stuff at you. He is a thrower, but he doesn't seem to want to throw you much. Boom. We got the large bonus again. Hurrah! That's what we like to see. Definitely don't want to end up in dire straits again.
Anyway, on to match number 22. I'm on you. Only 11 more to go. Hooray! Yeah. Anyway, here's Margarita. You may remember Margarita as, uh. You probably won't remember her. Though she did give us the amazing Hanzo Steel for defeating her. Which we never used. Because it's not very good. I think by that point we also had the uh, Excalibur, a much more powerful sword weapon. Even if it is completely unwieldy and basically useless to use. Hence why I'm not using it in this, the greatest challenge, despite it essentially being the ultimate weapon of the game. 100% sure why I equipped the face mask. I guess I was hoping that it would provide some defense because its its ability was a special apparently. Don't know what's so special about it. Very vague. Anyway, the lonely old man is one of the seven sages. We fought him in a tiny cave last time. He was a little bit hard because he's got a water pistol and we didn't really have much room to maneuver. He gave us the fantastic bubble hood. In the larger arena, he's, uh, well, very easy. There's still a bit of a step up from the uh, Mem Village crew. He's gonna make us really fight for that 90 seconds there. We're gonna end up with the 45 second bonus. There we go, more throwing. More throwing means more winning. Not at the moment though. Because we're rarely throwing. We'll see next time just how powerful a strategy just throwing stuff can be. The next video. I'm betting on you! Kick some ass! Anyway, after all of that, we start fighting the Globetrotters, of course. We didn't get to fight Basil in the actual uh, storyline of the game, at least not in the good path. Maybe we'll actually get to fight him. Oh god, he's a thrower. He's not much of a thrower, though. Not much of a thrower at all. Yeah, Basil's pretty easy. Pretty much exactly what you expect from, you know, actually fighting Basil. He's doing the YMCA. That's exciting to me. I won. Yes, you did. Well, you may have noticed earlier there was a sig a uh, suspicious absence from the. Uh, the ranked gladiators we fought before in that we didn't actually fight Fennel. Even though he is an S ranked fighter. Well we fight him now. Oh he's only A ranked, really? Wow. It's interesting, we only actually uh, fought Schneider once in the game and that was at the UTC. There's no other opportunity to fight with him apart from this mode, of course, or the free battle mode. It's all sad. The uh, free battle mode actually locks you into playing as uh, as vanilla in your custom Trotterville. While I believe the two-player mode lets you choose from uh, the other characters and their Trotterbills. I believe you can even play as uh, Dr. Nutmeg in his giant mecha lab if you really wanted to. I quite want to, but I don't have a second controller or anybody to play with, so that shall remain a mystery to me. Anyway, Fennel's really not much of a problem. He's really just Elder Light. He's got that missile weapon. And that's about it. Not as fast either. 
match 26 we're burning through this another character we never thought it's Marjoram in the big bear we kind of like that his trotmobile is called the big bear Anyway, Marjoram, really no challenge at all. He's just going to throw stuff, and he's not going to be very effective at it. He doesn't actually have weapons, he has stage arms, which basically operate like crap shields. It's the only way to describe their weapon potential. Anyway, on to the next one. I believe uh, Savory is up next, in fact. I think. Could be wrong, though. I'm betting on you. Kick some ass. Oh no, we're up against Connie. Woo, Connie. In the old grey one. Yes, I probably prattled on endlessly before during when we actually fought her in the epilogue she's basically just got the uh, standard trotmobile from the start of the game but with uh, minor adjustments in that she's got a junker arm instead of a scrap arm also it's pink pretty much any uh, trotmobile with the small body or well, in fact the medium body is really not going to be that much of a challenge Especially with the large body equipped. It's a shame the uh, the waterproof body only comes in the uh, medium variety. Now we're on to match number 28. This one's savoury. I'm sure this one's savoury. This one must be savoury. She's the only one left. There we go. Bizarrely, she's uh, she's not actually equipped like she was during the second uh, penultimate fight in the game second to penultimate penultimate fight that's what I meant the second to last one the penultimate one instead she's uh, got the stage arms that she had earlier in the game when she was actually you know performing with the globetrotters seems like a bit of a strange choice but I suppose she's only a boss in the uh, in the good path. If you played the bad path, I suppose they wanted to keep the fact that you fight Savory a surprise by not giving her decent weapons. I say decent weapons. She had the whip and uh, the dart gun, I think. I don't believe we can actually acquire the dart gun. It's one of those uh, parts reserved only for the computer. Ah, oh, here's another interesting one, it's Bergamot. Only this time he's not going to stand still. It's one hell of a gaudy looking machine. Oh, I should probably mention that we've, uh, after 20 matches, like 9, to nine matches ago, we've uh, earned the second prize. We'll have a look at that sometime. It's very exciting. Are you excited? I'm excited. Anyway, Bergamot's really not much of a problem when you've actually got room to manoeuvre. Also, when you've uh, actually got weapons equipped instead of useless wings. So you're not just throwing torpedoes at him for some reason. He's got a fun losing animation. Unfortunately, he doesn't tell us to stop, stop doing stuff and not touch things after we beat him here. But what ends? Ah, nutmeg. Yep. The game really can't deal with the sheer size of the mecha lab very well at all. We didn't really get to see much of him in the game. 
His uh, boss fight was sort of random and also in the dark, so here's what he looks like when it's not. Well, okay, it is night, but it's floodlit. Basically, he's got no ranged weapon, so uh, stay away, I guess. Every time I hit him with the uh, Excalibur, he seems to punish me for it in the uh, actual game. But the Gatling arm makes quick work of him. I won. And we are into the final two battles now. I think you just need a little more practice at it. Also, that's what it looks like when he wins. That was mercifully recorded in the free battle mode. I didn't lose to him then. So that would be that would be an hour, an hour of playtime to get back. That would have been nice if I'd lost him. Anyway, the first champion, Ginger. Remember Ginger? You probably don't remember Ginger. We fought him beneath of a park in the sewers of uh, Nefroburg. He gave us a boomerang, I believe, beating him. Or did he? No, he gave us the fin roof, but he's got a boomerang. He lives in squalor beneath an underpass with uh, with Basil now for some reason. But he's really no problem. We almost got the 15 second bonus. We were off by a uh, Three tenths of a section. Section? Second. Words. Anyway, match number 32. Guess who it is? Of course, it's Elder. It's Dandelion. It is the final boss of the game himself. Once again, actually wearing his mask. And also, yes, I did lose to Elder. This was this was when I stopped playing. This was when I gave it a rest. That is not a nice thing to happen. Not a nice thing at all. <sighs> Sliver of health away from owning the plate then. Anyway, Elder's just as annoying as every other time before him, except uh, we got the added pressure of an hour's worth of playtime riding on this. It is incredibly tense. As before, you're basically going to want to jump around and avoid his missile attacks because they really do a lot of damage if they actually hit you. There we go. And if you get caught in the explosion afterwards, that's even worse. Eventually he's going to run out of missiles and come at us with his giant sword. Also, he is ridiculously hard to hit with Gatling Gun because he will not stand still. The only way to rely on me hit him is to get him close, and uh, what's going to happen then is he's going to smash you with his sword. Oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. He's getting too close. He can really, really punish you quite effectively. Ah, lost lock on. That's no good. If he gets in close, a lot of your health is going to disappear. As unwieldy as the uh, Excalibur is, and as slow as it is, it really does a lot of damage. Anyway, throw him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. So this is really getting down to the wire, we've only got 30 seconds left. It's fine, everything's fine. Everything is just fine and dandy, and we did it, and we won. We won. We don't have to do anything more. All of the what? Which mean match 33. I'm on you. Kick some ass. Thankfully, what happens here is the game just uh, just repeats. I guess the challenge is to get the high score. Anyway, let's speed this up because what I'm going to demonstrate here is uh, Chucky is so bad at fighting that he cannot beat us when we are in red health when we just stand still, he just spins around us. Also, I used the explosion that I randomly brought along. It did a tiny, tiny bit of damage to Chucky. It is a very wasteful, wasteful use of this item. Seriously, he very, very, he just goes around forever. And this is what happens when you run out of time. The 
little things declared a draw, but it acts as if you lost. Anyway, we've got the sports engine, the skull drill, and the death match plate! Hooray! Also, it only, uh... You want to save. Definitely want to save. It only says that I played once, because I didn't save all the failed attempts before. Anyway, save. And that's it for this time, see you next time for Ending Fun.